Hi everyone, Jason from Acara here with another project tutorial video. And in this one, we're learning how to create a tic-tac-toe board game using the Carvera Desktop CNC and Fusion 360. Now you can use a wide range of CAD programs to create a design file or a 3D model to actually manufacture this tic-tac-toe board. But you can also visit the knowledge sharing page on our wiki site to download the models that I'll be using in this tutorial. We've created design files for boards in three different thicknesses to support a wider range of materials that you might be working with. And while I'll be making the 25 millimeter board in this tutorial, the process will be very similar for each option. Once you've obtained your model, we can import or open the file in Fusion 360 starting with the tic-tac-toe board. After switching to the manufacturing tab, we want to ensure that we are working in millimeters before we create a new setup for this job. In the setup menu, Select the Carvera Desktop CNC 3-axis profile as your machine and choose a stock box point as your work coordinate system origin. It is important to select the stock box point to be the top left corner of the stock to match our probing position on the Carvera. In the stock tab, you can keep the relative stock size to our model, but I personally prefer to set a fixed box size and set this to match the actual stock I'll be using for this project. Personally, I am using a piece of stock that is 200 millimeters wide by 120 millimeters deep, and I can offset my part to be 15 millimeters from the left and front edges. The height of my stock is 28 millimeters, which will fit the 25 millimeter board file that I am using. I don't want the board to be centered, however, and I will instead offset this to be zero millimeters from the bottom so it is flush with the bottom of the stock. We don't need to make any adjustments to the part position or post-processing settings as these can always be adjusted later on as needed so we can just press OK to confirm and save these settings. Next, we're gonna create our first toolpath, which will be the 2D face operation. This will allow us to remove excess material from the stock because the stock is thicker than the final board, so we can surface the face to actually come to our final thickness for our part. We can select tool four from the Carvera example tools, which is our 12 millimeter single flute end mill, and you can choose from the default profiles based on whatever material you will be machining. I'm choosing the hardwood profile, but I also still like to reduce my cutting speed to 500 millimeters per minute when looking for a cleaner finish. In the geometry tab, we wanna select the outer edge of our model as a chain so we will be able to surface this area rather than the entire piece of stock. For our heights, our retract, feed, and top height will all be based on the stock top along with the default offsets. And our bottom height will be based on the top of our model, not the stock, as we'll be machining to the model during this operation. In the Passes tab, we want to enable multiple depths, and for softer materials, one millimeter as a maximum step over may be okay, but it may also put excess wear on our bit. We can instead use Fusion's auto-calculating features to find the recommended step-down based on our selected bit, and I like to use even step-downs personally. After pressing OK, we can preview this toolpath to ensure all looks as it should. Now moving on to the pockets for the marbles, we're gonna do this in two separate toolpaths to rough cut it and then do a fine detailed cut. For the first pass, we're going to make a 3D pocket toolpath and select tool one from the examples library, which should be the 25 millimeter single flute end mill. Again, we'll be selecting the profile based on our material and I'm going to change the cutting feed to be 500 millimeters per minute based on my preferences. For the pockets, we're going to choose a selection for the machining boundary and select the outer edge of each pocket as a chain, not the inner profiles. We also do not need to use rest machining for this operation. For the heights, we're gonna change the retract and top height to be based on the model top as we've now faced the stock to the model. But we're gonna leave the bottom as the model bottom. Not that we're gonna actually machine this far, the 3D pocket toolpath should automatically detect the bottom of our pockets based on our selection. For passes, we don't need to enable stock to leave as we wanna machine the whole pocket using this bit. It is important that we leave maximum roughing step down to be one millimeter as we want to be rough cutting these pockets based on the diameter of the bit. We can also enable smoothing and feed optimization, which should reduce the file size and also reduce the negative loads on our bit automatically. After pressing OK, we can simulate the toolpath and we should see shelves or step-like cuts into our pockets. Now, this of course isn't the finish that we want in our pockets, but it's good to remove the material before we then go back with a more fine detail bit. For the finishing cut, we're going to create another 3D pocket operation, but this time choose a different bit. I'm going to use a 2.5 millimeter two flute ball nose bit for metal, which I've added to my tools. 
I also need to renumber this tool to tool two as the number that was originally set is already being used in this project. The default preset should be acceptable for most soft materials, especially as we've already rough cut these pockets, but I'm still gonna reduce my cutting feed to 500 millimeters per minute. We again are going to select the outer perimeters of our pockets as chains and also disable rest machining just to make sure we get the whole pocket in this pass. For heights, we wanna select the model top for our top height and the model bottom for our bottom heights again, and in passes, we want smoothing and feed optimization to be enabled, as well as manual step over if you are using a ball nose bit. After pressing OK, we can now see that our pockets are much smoother with this pass as desired. And lastly, we're gonna make a final toolpath to actually cut this part out of the stock. Using a 2D contour toolpath, we can select a bit that is long enough to machine all the way through our material. I'm selecting a 42 millimeter spiral O end mill, which is assigned to tool number six. Again, we can choose a profile based on the material we are cutting, and I'm going to reduce my feed rate once again. Under geometry, we can select the bottom edge of our board as a chain, and then we need to enable tabs. Tabs hold the part in the stock so it doesn't actually fly out during machining, and then of course we can cut these tabs manually after manufacturing is finished. You can keep the automatic settings for tabs, but I like to control the number of tabs as well as increase the size over the default feet presets. For heights, we are going to use our stock top again, just because this contour may start cutting out of the area that was faced previously. For the bottom, I'm going to use the model bottom and also offset an additional negative 0.5 millimeters below the bottom just to ensure that I cut all the way through. For passes, we want to enable multiple depths and I will again use Fusion's auto calculation features based on my selected bit. I also like to finish only at the final, which saves some time and provides a cleaner finish, as well as enabling even step downs, smoothing and feed optimization as we did before. Then press OK and simulate the whole setup to see how our part will be made. Lastly, we can use the post-processing menu to generate a G-code file for the Carvera. You can name the file and also ensure that it's being made using the Carvera's profile and millimeters as your units. If you wanted, you could also separate the operations into multiple files, though this isn't necessary based on how you are manufacturing your part. Now, before we actually manufacture this part, we have to load the stock onto our Carvera. Because we're machining all the way through our stock, we want to put a piece of wasteboard to protect the bed. This can be a single piece of material or a material that covers the entire bed like the sheets available on the Make Hair Store, which I am using. I'm also going to use the taller corner bracket as the stock that I'm using is quite thick. To secure the stock, I'm using a collection of edge clamps and top clamps to press and hold the stock all the way around the outer perimeter to make sure that it's secure. I also need to make sure that the bits we are using in our design are inserted in the corresponding slots within the automatic tool changer. Now we can open the G-code file generated by Fusion 360 in the Carvera controller to start this job. In the run and config window, we can adjust our work origin offsets as needed, but this should be in the right spot based on how we set up our stock and fusion. We want to enable scan margin, which will show us the position of our part before machining, auto Z pro, which will calculate the height of our stock automatically, and auto leveling, which will compensate for any inconsistencies in our stock thickness. My stock is quite flat, so I'm going to set the clearance height of two and only three probe points for X and Y. Once set, we can press run to start our job. The Carvera will first pick up the wireless Z probe to scan the perimeter of our part, then measure the Z height, and then probe the surface so it can automatically level during machining. The Carvera will then select tool 4 to surface the part before switching to tool 1 to rough cut out the pockets, then tool 2 to finish cut the pockets, and then lastly tool 6 to cut the outer perimeter. Once finished, we can vacuum any excess dust before unclamping the stock and then carefully cutting the part out of the stock by cutting the tabs to release it. Now, this could be the end of the project if you'd like, as you have a nice little tic-tac-toe board. But if you're using thicker stock like I am, we can use the thicker stock to also store the marbles from within it, and then we can actually create a lid as well as cut pockets as well. After opening the lid file, we can make a new setup with the Carvera set as our machine and the top left corner set as a stock box point for our origin. I'm again going to set a fixed stock size based on the material that I'm using, which in this case is 135 millimeters by 100 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And I'm again going to offset my part that is closer to the left and front edges and align with the bottom of the stock. For our first operation, we again need to create a 2D face toolpath to machine down our stock to the height of our part. I'm going to use tool four again, which is the 12 millimeter single flute end mill set to the hardwood preset with a cutting feed rate of 500 millimeters per minute. In the geometry tab, we can select the outer edge of our part as a chain. And then in the heights tab, we want to use our stock top for the top heights and the model top for our bottom heights as that's where we're surfacing to. In passes, we want to enable multiple depths and also set our maximum step down to be calculated based on our bit. And I always prefer to use even step downs personally. 
Once we press OK, we can see that our first toolpath is simulated and should look as we desire. Next, we're going to create a drill operation, and I'm going to choose a 3.175 millimeter or eighth inch drill bit that I have set to be tool two. We can select the whole face in the geometry tab, and then the model top and model bottom in the heights tab. I also like to enable drill tip through the bottom and add a 0.5 millimeter offset to ensure that I drill fully through the part. To ensure that we don't break our bit or our stock, we're going to select a deep drilling operation in the cycles tab, which will pack little by little to drill our hole, which we can see when we press OK and simulate this toolpath. Next, we want to create a 2D contour path to cut the outer edge of our part, and I'm going to choose tool one again, which is the 25 millimeter end mill. We can set the feeds and speeds based on our stock again, and then select the bottom edge of our model as a chain to be machined. We want to again enable tabs, and I'll be setting there to just be two tabs that are a little bigger than the default settings. We can then set our heights based on our model, and I will again be setting the offset of the bottom to be negative 0.5 millimeters to ensure that I cut all the way through. And for passes, we want to enable multiple depths based on our bit for maximum step down, and I like to say finishing for the final step and also use even step downs. And of course, we can again enable smoothing and feed optimization before pressing OK to simulate this path. Now, as an added bonus, let's add a 2D chamfer path to clean up the finish of this part. We need to select the chamfer bit, like the one in the examples toolkit set to be tool number six. The default parameter should be acceptable for most soft materials, and we want to select the top edge and hole perimeter as chains to be chamfered. It's important that we face and cut these features prior to chamfering them so that there's actually an edge to work with. For the heights, we're going to set the top height to be based on the model, and then the bottom height to be based on the selected contours, which are the paths that we will be chamfering. In the passes tab, we need to set a width for our chamfer so there actually will be a chamfer, and I'm going to set this to be 0.5 millimeters. We can then enable smoothing and feed optimization before pressing OK. Now in the simulation, the green part that we see is the part that will actually be machined, and we are now seeing a gray perimeter within this part. The gray is the original model, which did not have a chamfer in it. So to see what our finished part would actually look like, we need to hide the original model using the browser on the side, so that way we can inspect our chamfer. Lastly, we can use the post-processing menu to export this as a G-code file using the Carvera profile. Now, back to the Carvera, we can secure the stock for the lid using top clamps based on the thickness of the stock you are working with, and then, of course, we also want to ensure that our bits are swapped to correspond with the new design file we just created for the lid. After uploading the file to the Carvera via the Carvera controller app, we can open the run and config window to prepare this job. I'm again going to use scan margin, auto Z probe, and auto leveling for this part. The Carvera will then automatically calibrate and machine our part by switching between the needed tools automatically. After which I can remove the part and carefully cut off the tabs. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually machine these holes all the way with the Carvera. And the reason being that even though that this piece, this part fits in the Carvera, I can't fit both the part and a cutting bit, which will cut all the way through, or at least as far as I need to go. But we can still use the Carvera to help with these by drilling some pilot holes for us. In a new Fusion document, let's insert the DXF file, which is the top profile for our tic-tac-toe board that includes the pilot holes for the center screw, as well as the two marble pockets onto a sketch within this document. We can then move to the Manufacturing tab and manufacture this 2D sketch. After creating a new setup with the Carvera selected, we can choose the top left corner as a stock box point for our origins. It's important to ensure that the sketch is oriented correctly as the two larger holes for the marbles must be towards the back of the tic-tac-toe board. I can select the corner that I want to be the front left, then flip the x-axis to make sure that the part is oriented correctly for the Carvera. For the stock, we want to do a relative stock size, but also set to be sure that there's no additional stock added to ensure that we're working with the board which has already been cut. After pressing OK, we're going to make a drill operation and then select a smaller drill bit which will fit in the clearance height above our part. I'm going to use the 2mm bit which comes with the Carvera spare tool pack. In the geometry tab, I can select the center points of each hole within the sketch. Then in the heights tab, I can select the tops to be based on the stock top and the bottom to be based on the stock bottom. I'm going to set an offset of 3 millimeters for the bottom, which is how far the Carvera will actually drill into our part. For cycle, we again want to choose a peck drilling operation like the deep drilling path that we chose earlier. Lastly, we can use the post-processing menu to export this as a G-code file to be manufactured. 
Now, to actually hold this part in the Carvera, this would be a great opportunity to use a vise that's mounted to the bed of your Carvera if you have one. But if you don't have a vise, we can actually still hold this part securely by using another piece of material and some top clamps. You can square the part up with the corner clamp and then hold it using another piece of stock and top clamps to make sure that it is fully secure. It is also important to ensure that the tic-tac-toe board is facing forward so that it matches our design file and the work origin that we had set in Fusion. We need to insert our drill bit and we're also gonna be using the manual probe for this part, so I'm gonna be inserting the test probe, which ships with the Carvera into an available slot. So we're gonna use the manual XYZ probe for this to ensure that our part is perfectly centered on our model, because we can use that to find not only our Z height, but also the edges of this part as well, to make sure that everything's squared up onto this part, which has already been cut. After securing the stock and opening the G-code file in the Carvera controller, select the test probe as your tool. Then use the manual controls to move the head of the Carvera so it's over the stock. We need to remove the dust chute before plugging in the XYZ probe into the side of the bed and also placing the magnetic grounding cable onto the spindle. We then want to square the probe plate up to the front left edge of our part. If needed, you can continue to adjust the head of the Carvera so that the test probe is located above the pocket of the XYZ plate. Now in the config and run window, we can set our work origin based on the XYZ probe. If you're using the test probe like me, the default parameters are correct, so we can just press OK to start the probing sequence. The Carvera will touch the plate to find the edges of our stock and then return to the new origin position found through the probing sequence. We can then remove the probe plate and reinstall the dust chip. After the probing sequence is complete, we could set a new offset if needed from the current position, which would be the probing position. But we shouldn't need to do this as our design file was already configured based on our parts profile. We want to enable scan margin to confirm our positions, but we don't want to enable auto Z probe or auto leveling as this would override the manual positions we just set with the XYZ probe. After pressing run, we can inspect where the Carvera scans the perimeter of our design, which should be centered in the top of the tic-tac-toe board. The Carvera will then automatically switch to our drill bit and drill our three pilot holes. Once finished, we can remove our stock and carefully drill the pockets for the marbles using a drill press based on the pilot hole location that the Carvera created for us. Lastly, we can use a screw to secure the lid to our board and then enjoy this project through a fun game of tic-tac-toe. Projects like this really showcase the flexibility of the Carvera as we were able to use a wide range of bits and the auto calibration features to machine our parts accurately with ease. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and of course, please stay tuned for more projects, tutorials, how-tos, and guides on the Makera channel.